Hi everyone, I'm Father Shane, and this is The Spiritual Life. Today I want to tell you about one of my all-time favorite saints. His name is Saint John de Brebeuf, and he was a French priest and missionary. He lived in the late 1500s and the early 1600s, and he served in North America, what is now today the southern part of Canada and the northern part of the United States. In 1625, as a young man, he went to the New World with a load of French colonists who were going to kind of stake their claim uh, in this New World. But John de Brebeuf and his brothers weren't going in order to, to make their wealth. They weren't going in order to kind of seek adventure. They were going with one mission only in mind, and that was to bring the gospel to the native people there. He wanted to bring the offer of salvation to the native people in the new world, and he wanted to bring them closer to heaven. So, a little bit about John de Brebeuf. The first thing you need to know about him is John de Brebeuf was a man. He was a real man. This was a man's man. He was big. He was very strong. He was... Uh, kind of very determined in his outlook. He was, a, he was rugged, right? He had kind of a vigor to him. Uh, he was no kind of shrinking violet, right? He was a strong, kind of a powerful, even a physically like very uh, powerful guy. And he needed every bit of that for the mission that God had intended for him because he was sending them, these Jesuit priests were being sent to the new world, to a place where there wasn't the sort of uh, civilized niceties that they had grown up with in France. You needed to be rugged to go over there. This was a hard, tough life. So, uh, John de Brebeuf was uh, a tough man. In fact, uh, he was, this, this will give you just a sense of sort of the, the sort of man, the caliber that we were talking about. Uh, the Huron, the people that he went to go and serve, the native people, they gave him a name. The name they, that they gave him was Echan. That name Echan in their language means he who carries the heavy load. And they called him that because he would portage his own canoe. He would take the canoe up on his shoulders and he would walk these long kind of distances portaging between one lake and another lake or between a river and a lake. He would take this, his canoe on his own shoulders over the land. And not only that, he would rush back in order to take these heavy bags these heavy, um, uh, the heavy equipment that he was carrying. You see, John de Brebeuf wasn't just carrying sort of his, you know, food and provisions. He was carrying that, but he was also carrying all of the things that he needed for the mission. So he was carrying his priest vestments. He was carrying the chalices. He was carrying uh, all of the things that he would need to celebrate Mass and to carry out the mission that he was going to, uh, that God had asked of him. So, he had a heavy load, and the Huron recognized this, and they saw that, that this was a man to be respected. This was a, a man who was not afraid of hard work. He was rugged, and he was up for any challenge that he might face. The second thing that uh, you need to know about St. John de Brebeuf was uh, that he was also very intelligent. This wasn't just like a big lug of a guy, kind of a big meathead, you know? Uh, John de Brebeuf was very intelligent as well. Um, he was specifically very good with languages. So they recognized this when he was a student in France, before he was a priest at all. They recognized that he was very good at learning, picking up new languages. So his superiors thought, right, this is the man now that we want to send to the New World. Because in the New World, there were all of these tribes of native people, and they had no idea what they spoke, the language that they spoke. So he sent, they sent over John de Brebeuf, and John de Brebeuf the, went and uh, became, sort of was, was welcomed into these tribes and lived amongst them. They knew no French, and they, and he, knew no bit of the Huron language. It's called Wyandotte, the language that they speak. They, he knew nothing. So he had to just sit and like listen and try to piece together what were they saying and try to, try to then um, kind of put his own words on it, let's say, or to recognize the different items that they were pointing to and try to, try to listen carefully to see could he pick up their, 
what that word was exactly. And then to create a written language so that he could not only speak it himself, but he could teach the other Jesuits who were waiting in France to be missionaries themselves. He could teach them that language in order that they could go and they could explain who God was to them, explain who Jesus was, and explain what God asks of us. And of course, the promises as well that God makes to, to those who are faithful to him. So John W. Buff, very intelligent, very sharp guy. The last thing that I'll say about John W. Buff, not only was he physically uh, formidable, strong, rugged, not only was he very intelligent, really of sharp mind, a strong mind, but he was also a man of great moral, moral courage or moral strength. This man was seriously courageous. You see, John de Brebeuf and the other Jesuits were men whose lives were literally on the line. They went to serve amongst the Huron people, and the Huron people at times were deeply suspicious of these Jesuits. They didn't understand exactly Christianity. They didn't understand what a priest was. And so they thought, could these men be sorcerers? And maybe are they uh, doing us harm rather than doing us good? And so literally the Jesuits' lives were often at risk. And they often, uh, they knew that by going to the mission and staying on the mission, that they were literally putting their lives on the line in the name of God and in the name of bringing these native people whom God loves and loved closer to heaven. So, uh, not only though was they, were they at risk from the Huron people whom they went to serve, but also from another uh, local or another tribe called the Iroquois who were uh, much more fierce and warlike. So the Iroquois were the kind of blood enemies of the Huron. And the Iroquois would make raiding, uh, kind of uh, would form raiding parties and would make war against the Huron. And often they would slaughter, kill the Huron, and not only the Huron, but they would also kill those who were with them, like the Jesuits, right? Like these priests. That's exactly how St. John de Brebeuf died, actually. Uh, St. John de Brebeuf and uh, one of his uh, Jesuit brothers, uh, Father Lalamont, um, were working there in this town called St. Joseph, in this village called St. Joseph. And uh, they were serving there when one of these Iroquois uh, raiding parties came in and they rounded everybody up and they began to slaughter them. Uh, and they recognized that uh, St. Isaac or St. Uh, John de Brebeuf and St. Uh, Lalamont were, um, were priests. And so what they did was they singled them out along with the other Christians who these converts of the Huron people, they, they, um, they singled them out for special torture and they tortured St. John de Brebeuf. They tortured him by tearing out his fingernails, by uh, cutting his skin off. Uh, they tortured him by uh, hanging burning arrowheads or axe heads rather uh, against his flesh and then uh, staging a mock baptism of him with boiling water. St. John de Brebeuf was, uh, was remarkable throughout all of this time because his main concern was not his own physical well-being or the pain that he was going through. His single focus was on his brother priest and these other Huron Christians, these people who had converted and he spent his time, while he was being tortured, he spent his time talking to them and saying to them, keep the faith, stay strong, trust in God. Today we will be with him in heaven. And kind of filling them with faith, with real strength. And this drove the Iroquois absolutely <laughs> bananas, berserk. Uh, his perseverance, his strength, when they were trying to break him with their tortures, was more than they could handle. But... Uh, Despite their frustration with him, they recognized that this was a man of singular courage, of incredible strength, a strength that we know comes from God. But he had it. He had it in, in spades. So, St. John de Brebeuf was taken. They cut open his chest. They took out his heart and they ate it. 
They ate it because they recognized the courage that he had and they wanted, they thought that if they could consume his heart, that they would take on some of that spirit, that fearlessness that he had. This is the kind of man that we're talking about, a man who was uh, physically formidable and strong and rugged, a man of real serious intelligence and also a man of fearless courage, able to face even death in the face without it breaking him. And instead, his main concern was out of love for his brothers and a desire to die well for God without abandoning God or losing his trust in him. What does St. John de Bibeuf and his life uh, say to us? What does it teach us? Well, I think it, po- it maybe points us to those different things, you know, the intelligence, the, you know, the, the sort of um, ruggedness, you know, the ability to sort of face challenges, etc., and then also the moral courage, right? We want to be like him in all of those ways. But maybe there's a deeper point, which is this. God has made you with gifts. God has given you gifts. St. John de Brebeuf was a gifted man in many different ways. He took those gifts and he put them at the service of God so that other people would know God's goodness, God's plan for them, and that they would know his, his offer of salvation. And he put them at the service of this mission so that these people could come closer to heaven, that they could know again all that God had literally died in order that they, they might know and experience. Imagine all of the gifts that you have. Normally, what do we do with our gifts? We use them, we develop them, we might take pride in them. Uh, normally, who benefits though from our gifts? Eh, us, mostly, right? Imagine though if you took the gifts, your artistic abilities, your intelligence, your, um, your physical abilities, your, uh, your moral strength or moral ability, right? Imagine if you took all that God had given to you and if you put that uh, to the service of him. The greatest thing that you could do with the gifts God has given to you is to point back to him, is to sort of, to give God honor and glory because he's the one, he's like the author of all of those gifts. And imagine if you put that at the service of literally the salvation of other people's souls. You have gifts that God has given to you. They mightn't be the exact same gifts like St. John de Brebeuf. They might be the same gifts that God has given to me or that God has given to other people, your brothers or sisters, but he's given you gifts. And just like he used St. John de Brebeuf, you'd better believe that he wants to use you as well. Will you let him use you? Can you recognize the gifts that you have and are you generous enough to put those at the service of others and to put those at the service of God? These are something that for all of us to to take uh, St. John de Brebeuf as an inspiration and as a challenge. What are the gifts God has given to you? And are you generous enough, generous enough to put them at the service of others? God bless you all.